Oh, hello and welcome to this video tutorial. In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to get the third, uh, well, the first demo project of Chapter 3 in Andrew Lamoth's Tricks of the 3D Windows uh, Programming Gurus. I think that's the actual title. I don't have the book right next to me right now. Anyhow, it's that that assignment is presenting problems in code blocks, and I'm going to show you what's going on and how to deal with it. So I already have everything all loaded up. Same process as I've taught you in the other videos. We have some resource files here, and these are simply added by copying them into wherever you have your your projects for code blocks and you go to you right click on the demo or the name which is a, should be demo 3 underscore 1 you go to add files and then you just add in the files that you'll see in the source code for this provided I can get there this will be a minute I forgot to preload this the more stuff I preload, the less issues I seem to have. So I got a Lamoth folder here, and then I got Tricks of the... Okay, it's Windows Game Programming Gurus, not 3D. So Tricks of the Windows Game Programming Gurus, second edition, chapter 3, first project, could not get it to run, we'll explain in a minute. In the source directory for T3D chapter 3, and I'm not explaining where to find all of this stuff because that's already been gone over in the other videos and you're expected to be an intermediate level computer user as always and you're expected to have already watched the other videos and understood where to get the source code and all that so we got Crosshair we've got Demo31RC and I'm not going to explain what these files are because Lamoth does so in the book and an ICO file those need to be copied over somewhere into wherever you're going to build your project. I've already done it, so I won't do it again. And then you open this one in Notepad or some other text editor, and this one in Notepad or some other text editor. Make sure it's a basic text editor and not a word processor. You don't want any of that weird background symbols going into the, your code. And you'll see that they're here in my project directory except for I do not appear to have added a couple of things. I'll add them now just to make sure they're there. And you always want both checked. Okay, there's my crosshair and my T3D DX ICO. Okay. And in, in, in the uh, Demo31CPP, that's done by going to File, New, File, of course, and then picking CPP. And then you just copy and paste into your thing from the source over here. So this one. You could just copy these files over, but these are C files. <sighs> Excuse me, I've got a bug crawling all over me. And this copy paste, I believe, is what updates it to C++, but I could be mis mistaken on that. And then you do the same thing for this res file, which is right here, and that's all that's in it. Always leave a, a, a following line at the end. Don't cut it off here on line 2 at the end of this. Press enter and have an extra line, and I'll show you why that's important shortly in another program. And same thing here, and this is what's in here. So everything is ready to rock, and I want to show you what happens. So if I go to build and build, take a look at this error I get down here. DirectX, no such file or directory. SDK, no such file or directory. June, no such file or directory. Include, no such file or directory. Now the problem here with this is this is the path roughly to where I have uh, DirectX stored and the files are there. So why is it giving me this message? I have no idea. 
it's some bug or some issue in code blocks. There's nothing in any of the code that's causing this. This is not Lamoth's doing. This is something to do with code blocks. Um, and the way to fix it is to go to settings and go to compiler. And you're going to see some things have been changed here from the last videos that we've done for code blocks. Okay, so now we go to linker settings and then one more over to search directories. Okay, now it looks a little different here because I had an OpenGL call in here and I had a MinGW call in here. I deleted all of that and this, but I put it back to show you the error message. What you have to do, and I hate to, to tell you to do this because I don't know of any other way to do it, you have to delete it. And we may have to re-add it later. But it's odd, I've been able to run some of the other code without this stuff in here. So I don't understand that and I need to do, well I need to read about this compiler in the first place. I haven't even spent the time to learn this IDE. I'm just kind of wandering around here in the dark. I don't have time to sit here and spend learning the IDE. I, I want to invest my time and energy into learning how to code. That is what matters. And I shouldn't have to learn all the complications of programming and code and everything else and then all the complications of an ID and all the complications of this, that, and the other. This is frustrating. I should be able to sit down, type in some code, and run something. It's really been frustrating for me because the way I see programming, it's a big wide open field. It's a beautiful, gorgeous wide open field. You can go anywhere you want. I take off my shoes and socks. I start running out there and I smack into an invisible barrier because there's this giant maze out there in this freaking field of all these rules and regulations and laws and things you have to know and you don't know about it until you smack into it. And you have to wander around through this maze forever until you might finally get to the middle or the other side or whatever the goal might be to be able to make what you want. And I'd rather just have a nice big wide open field no maze, but then if that was the way it was, if programming was just the old west and everybody could do whatever they wanted to do, there'd be no real way for programmers to communicate with each other. So the point is that learning to program is hard enough. I don't need to learn all the other crap as well. So, I haven't bothered reading the manual. If anyone has a problem with that, I'm sorry. Just be, I guess you just have to be upset about it. Anyway. <coughs> but that said, Lamoth does recommend you do get to know your ID, and it makes sense. How do you expect to be a carpenter if you don't get to learn how to use a hammer and chisel? If you just sit there and start hammering and chiseling randomly away until you figure it out. So it is smart to sit there and learn the IDE, but I am too frustrated and I don't want to spend an hour falling asleep trying to read through it and I can't print it out. I don't have a PDF reader, so I can't just print it out and read it, you know, in my bed comfortably at night before I go to bed or something. So, and who wants to read something like that anyway? It's going to be all complicated and boring more than likely. But the good news is they included a manual with this, so that's cool. And I appreciate their work and effort on that. I really do. It's just, I figure I'm going to do this learn as I go. And, and that's, this is going to be one of the problems that I want to run across. Is I'm going to get errors like this that don't make any sense. I can put a post up at Stack Overflow. Nobody knows what the heck's going on. Well, there was something that I read in another unrelated or maybe related thread somewhere that's ringing a, a vague bell but it was talking about how they had to remove some kind of path info and then it worked and I don't know why. Anyway, the one good thing about code blocks though, despite this issue, is that it doesn't have to worry about the multibytes or the Unicode thing and that's something we're going to have to deal with in Visual Studio which will be our next uh, adventure after we get done here. So we removed that and now we're going to go up to build again and we're just going to go to build. I don't think I'll try rebuilding. I don't think it's going to be necessary. Let's take a second. And if I have done my job, try to keep in mind that I have been sick for two weeks. I haven't really recovered from the last video or two that I did that I was sick in. And I'm just starting to get over whatever the heck it is that I have. So... I'm not thinking very clearly. Pressing save. You always want to save. Save often stupid SOS. 
press the play button or run button as it's more accurately called and now you have your cursor and you have your icon and everything is running as it should so that's how you get it working in code blocks remember though that if you've deleted that stuff that later you're gonna have to you might well I don't know if you have to yet I'm gonna try doing it without from now on so from now on I'm going to have it without and I'll tell you if I have to put it back in to get it to run but you may have to put the library and the includes and all that back in later to get something to run I don't know yet but I will keep you up to date and right now I will have it out and those are my settings and we'll go over one more time real quick before I leave so we're in the settings so what you should have is unless you're unless you've read the manual or you know code blocks better than I do and you set it up correctly and you're snickering at me because you know how to set it up right and I'm not doing it right and in that case it'd be nice if you'd post a video comment or regular comment and tell me how to set it up right and I'll give you credit for the information but in any case we still have all of the DirectX stuff here in the link libraries and the MinGW and this now what might be going on here is if I have it here I don't have to have it here that would be my guess or if I have it here I don't have to have it here and maybe the repetition is causing a problem or maybe I'm full of crap and I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't know. But that would be my guess right now. That's just kind of the way I am. I try to figure things out and try to... You know, I'm the guy that always tries to get out of the level. They should have me as a level tester because I will find a way out of the level or find a bug or get stuck or something because that's just what I do. And I'll try and find the solution too as well. You know, that's just the way I am. But anyway, in the compiler, linker, and resource compiler, there's nothing here. Now, a little homework assignment for you in code blocks that you can play with is you can go here to build options. And in build options, you notice you have the same stuff. So this is per project. So you could add the linker files here or you could add the search directories here. So I'll leave it to you to experiment with that. Remember to do it for both debug and release. You can't just select both at once here, I don't believe. Maybe you can. I guess going up to Demo 3.1 might do both. I don't know. I can't tell. Anyway, if you can figure that out. But, uh, yeah, probably going up to the main one will do both. But you can add the paths here and see if you still get the same error or if you get another error or if it works. But you'd have to do that each time you do a project. And I'm kind of, kind of, I want it easy. I don't want to have to fight that every single time. So I'm not messing with it. But you can play with that and see what kind of results you get. And that's your homework for code blocks. Okay, I'm going to leave briefly. You won't really see a difference. I'm going to turn it off and load up Visual Studio. And we're going to get this running and show you how to get it running in Visual Studio. It's a little more involved, but it's not too bad. Be right back. Okay, I don't quite know how I want to approach Visual Studio. It's going to be tricky. Um, I'm not 100% certain exactly all the different vagaries of which kinds of projects to use and how to work it here. Um, but I'm going to go through it as best I can. Something I forgot to, there's three things I forgot to mention. Uh, in the Andrew Lamoth source code that we were just looking at in Code Blocks, you might have noticed all the comments. Do yourself a favor and read those. It keeps you very well informed as to what's going on in his code. And secondly, um, we're going to find an error here. And I, I don't know if I'll be able to demonstrate it or not, but I'm going to show you what stops that. This is the site that I found the solution to, and you might want to write this address in somewhere and then go there. I don't know how to add it to the video. I might put it in the comments at the bottom, but I don't know. And another thing you're going to find in Visual Studio, we have to use multibytes. Actually, I guess I didn't have to cover this yet because we hadn't done Visual Studio yet. Oh, well, my thought processes aren't all there. Anyway, um, this is a whole discussion on why you shouldn't use multibytes and why it's a problem if you feel you have to. And a whole bunch of complicated stuff in here. And this would be a good homework assignment for you for Visual Studio to understand a little more about this whole uh thing going on here but just like in code blocks I try and set everything up as easily as possible so I can run the code because my goal 
is to run the code and learn. And nothing that I'm learning is being set in stone here. You know, what I'm doing here is I'm figuring out one way, the way I see it, it's one way to get through this maze that I told you about. And that's what I'm doing. And as I, once I've gotten through the maze one direction and I, I understand that way, then it would be easy enough for me to say, oh, well, this isn't done quite right. I'll go do it this way try to figure out from there, you know, if I should improve how I code, if there are certain things I should change in my approach. But the point is, is to get from point A to B first, as quickly and as easily as possible, and then worry about all the other crap later. Otherwise, I'm going to be spending years and years and years trying to learn how to program before I can actually program and do anything, and that's worthless. It's better to be programming and even making a lot of mistakes and learning from your mistakes than it is to not be programming and just constantly educating yourself. Well, at least for me, you know, being somebody that has to see some kind of a result or has to have something to look at to gauge his learning progress and some kind of encouragement or reasoning to continue, I have to be able to get to a point where I can start typing out different programs confidently and know that they're going to run and compile know that I can get through the maze and get it done even if it's not exactly technically correct and that's just the way it has to be um, there's just no easy good solution to this there's it's too it would take you way too long to sit there and learn the maze uh, if you just sat there and you memorized the map and the maze and you tried to figure out all the rules and regulations and all the stuff and you got that all memorized and then you try to get in there and start programming. I don't even know how anyone could stick with that path. Maybe if you're really disciplined you could. I don't know. If you want to go that way, more power to you. But me, I'm going to get in the car here, <laughs> so to speak, and I'm going to start driving and hit the walls as I go and eventually I'll get my way through. The car will probably blow up along the way, but I'll get there. A lot faster than I would if I sat there and I tried to memorize some map of the, pro of the process. So anyway, I don't know if that makes any sense, but I'm going to go to a new project over here in Visual Studio 2010 C++ Express. Now I did this before in a Win32 console application. I am going to really quickly, how am I going to do this? Excuse me a second. I don't want to lose what I've already coded, which was in another uh, type of project, but I want to do it a bit differently this time and see if I'm right about something and make sure that I'm teaching you the best way as far as I know. Which may not be very far, but... Alright, so let's see. So I'm going to call this... Demo 3 1 win, maybe. That should allow me to have a demo 3 1. So I'm going to go ahead and. How do I want to do this? Okay, I guess console is the one choice. There's forms, there's Win32. I kind of like the idea of an empty project and not having any... I can't remember if you can select that later or not. We're going to do this console application. Actually, you know what? I think this was what I did first, so I don't think I need to worry about that. Anyway, type in the name demo3 underscore 1. And, uh, yeah. And I'll press OK. See, in this chapter in in the Windows uh, Game Programming Gurus, we're dealing with Windows programming. And so it's not DirectX per se. Um, it's a bit different then. This might be important here. Because remember, we've had to change the options before to Windows from console, or it was from console or from uh, from Windows to console or consoles to Windows. I don't remember which. Let's go ahead and and do Windows and then do empty project. So Windows application and empty project. 
I'm just going to experiment here and kind of show you how to do all of this. And while that grinds away, I'm going to go over here to where my project folder has been created, which is right here. Now, there are some files that I need. Remember what I said, we need Crosshair, we need the Demo 3.1 RC, and we need the T3DX ICO, and we need to copy these over into our project folder, just right off the roots fine. And that's not all we have to what in the world do. We have to also put these files in here, and that can be easily done by just clicking after they are selected, dragging right over the name of your project. And now they should be inside your project. Now, we don't have any source files, it looks like. Yeah. So now I want to go to File, uh, put it on here first. I always try and put it, oh, come on now. All right, so go to File, New, uh, File, I think I'm doing it correctly. And you can select the type there. I think there's another way to do this. Right click and go to Add, New Item. Yeah, this is a better way to do it. So right click on the name of the, of the project name and go to New Item. We'll do the header file first, and I'm going to show you something here. So this is demo31res.h. So we'll go to add. Oh, no, we don't need to add the .h. We can just do the 31res. Either way. But just to make sure you don't have a .h.h .h or anything, you want to make sure it's the right name. Okay, and we're good here. So now I need to go here, and I need to open up this guy in Notepad. Any text editor that's just a normal text editor will be fine. A word processor will not work. Now, I'm going to show you an error. I'm going to do something purposely wrong. Okay, now this will should be wrong, and I'll show you why and what's going on here in a little bit. So I need to go to Add again, and a new item, and a C++ file, and this you want to call Demo31 and go to add and now we want to right click and open demo 31 cpp which stands for c++ edit select all edit copy or control a control c and then control v or edit paste to paste now, we want to save our project, of course. And let's see what kind of errors I'm going to get. It's loading or doing something, so I'm going to let it do that. There should be a couple of different types of things that are going to go wrong, and I'll show you what those are shortly. Okay, so we're going to go to Build, Build Solution. I haven't even tried to figure out what the manual for this beast would be. I think I will give myself and everyone else watching this and one more addition. So we got three homework assignments. And this last additional homework assignment is just a bonus homework assignment. Uh, what I'll have you do is read how to set up your compiler or linker or whatever that would be called in your particular program that you're using in your IDE. Try to figure out the best way to add libraries or to include libraries or to include file dependencies or whatever. There should be a chapter on that. It'll at least cover the the compiler or debugger options. So read up on that and see what it tells you and I'll do the same. I think we, we all need that. So. I hate it, but it needs to be done, so let's do it. So we got a cannot convert parameter 2 from const char to LPC and this other one. Okay, well what you're seeing here is if I went into tools, not tools, uh, where, 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 okay, I think it's right click properties. Yeah. 
and uh, of course always go to all configurations okay and trying to move it and you'll see that it says use a Unicode character set it generally always says that you always want multi-byte when you're doing this older code and that'll get rid of that error but that's what this thread right here that I told you about that's what this is discussing now it could be that Andre Lamoth has I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name correctly it could be Lamoth but it could be that he has improperly uh, coded his file where it says here in these uh, line 112 there should be a way to view line numbers. Let me see. Okay, well, I don't know how to view line numbers right now, but it's create window. Should be here near the bottom. Okay, so in here somewhere cannot convert so this might be the case okay, so that's underlined it said that's the parameter cannot do that from a constant char of 10 or, or I guess it's an array a constant char array 10 to an LPCWSTR whatever that is I, I think it's discussed in this book but I don't have it memorized so I don't know if this is correct or not, but this thread over here would reveal that, whether or not that be the case. I, however, don't care about whether it's correct. I only care about getting it to work. So what I've just done, if we go to build and build solution, that error should go away, but we'll probably have one more error. If not, then I will show you what happened and go over it that way. Okay, one failed. Unexpected end of file found. What in the world could that be? Well, that's what this link is for. And it tells you in here that it's a bug of the resource compiler. Add a blank space in the header file, basically. So if I go here to the res, you see that I purposely made sure I ended on this line. And for some reason, that doesn't work, so you got to have a space. Now, I said this somewhere else in another video, I don't know if it was this series or not, but sometimes you need that, I think it's called a leading line, leading blank line. It's something I learned from my uncle when he was doing batch, I think my uncle was doing, yeah, when my uncle was doing batch type programs and stuff, he was telling me about that, and I kind of remembered that. And so it made sense to me that, yeah, okay, it just needs that extra space for whatever reason, so add it. And get into a habit of adding that at the bottom of all your code, just as a good habit. I don't think you're going to go wrong having an extra blank line, so I have one here already. You know, and then maybe I can see if RC needs one. Okay, it doesn't like that. Okay, well, I ain't going to worry about RC. Anyway, so we added the space. Oh, come on now. What are we grinding on? And we'll save it. And it should now compile without any further errors. Should. Doesn't mean it will, but it should. It did last time I did this. But there's one more thing that, that we need to go over before we can call it a night.
Okay, and it said we succeeded. And now if we go to the run button, should see what we saw in code blocks. Cursor icon. Cursor looks like it has some kind of a weird design to it, but I'm not going to judge. Anyway, now right click on this, and we're going to go over the last thing, go to properties. This will take me a second to find this again. Uh, Oh, that's right, we want all configs. Always want all configs. Oh, come on now. So take me a sec, because I can't I just can't remember exactly where it is. I might have to leave and come back. Well, that isn't what I wanted. What are you doing now? I thought I was minimizing that one. Okay, I guess not. Ah, okay. So here in the system under the linker plus, you press the plus and it expands out. Um, you see this uh, Windows subsystem Windows. Remember, we selected Windows. Your other option you might find in here is console. Now I'm going to make this go bad on purpose. I'm going to go to console. And we've been over this before, but I want to explain to you why we chose Windows. And I don't know if that had an effect here, but I think it did. I think that made this automatically Windows. Otherwise, it would automatically be console because we, ch we had a Win32 console application as our project. That's what we did. Now, this may still run, but normally when you do this and you're doing Windows programming, are we going to go OK or not? It won't run. Um, I might have to stop and come back. It's giving me a fit. I really need to get a better computer. This is just not working. Okay, so we've done all the parsing we're going to build, and we should get a whole bunch of errors. We may not. We might work perfectly and show me wrong, but I think... Nope, one failed. Fatal error. One... Re uh, let me scroll over. One unresolved external symbol main referenced in function. Something about a library file. If I was to look any of this up, I'd probably find out that it's because it is a console. So all I have to do is right click on this and go and set this back to Windows and it should run okay. Except there's one slight problem. Every time you do that it's trying to parse now. Well maybe it won't now. Okay, that'd be nice. So I'm going to build again. Excuse me, I got a cough. <coughs> <coughs> okay. And now it succeeded and we press run. So if it doesn't work, check that and make sure. But that, that seems like that's a good approach. Go to the Win32 console application and then select the Windows option instead of the console option. Now I can't guarantee that that will always work, but I think that that set that automatically so we didn't have to go in there and mess with it. So that pretty much concludes this tutorial. I should be able to get uh, Demo 3.1 working. And hopefully this information will help you with any further issues you might have. And remember that code blocks... for me right now, will not have the library and various other include files that I had before and that we started this series with. So we'll see how that goes and I'll keep you up to date if I have to add it back in. It's still all set the same here in Visual Studio C++ uh, 2010. And yes, I do need to get a <coughs> C++ 2008 Express 
tutorial out on a couple of different matters, but most of the stuff you're doing here will work in 2008 the same way. See you next time.